we're standing, we're standing in George Street. We're, t we're talking about the city walls of Waterford and how Waterford came to be where it was and how it is. And we're actually outside the old city of Waterford. We're in a place, if you looked at Waterford from across the river up to 1700, you would have seen, you would have seen there was nothing here. You look at the street behind us, George's Street and T&H Doolan's. T&H Doolan's a narrow street, a narrow, the city wall actually ran across from T&H Doolan's here to the other side of the street and back up behind us. So up to about 1700, we would have been outside the city of Waterford. And the, the, the street behind us leaving, leading over to O'Connell Street is the 18th century expansion that happened after the city walls of Waterford were knocked down starting about 1705. So if, you, if we're going to move up, up into um, the yard behind us and we'll see the beach tower which is a, a, one of the towers which dominated an angle in the city walls. If you look at this particular tower you can see that it has two types of splits in it. Narrow ones at the bottom are we call bow and arrow slits, but the wider one at the top is the transitional one which gives you when they move from arrows to guns, cannons. So the beach tower here is standing, would have defended the whole big beach that ran from what people would now think of as Shaw's up as far as Bilberry Rock, which was then a long beach outside the city, a long muddy beach outside the city. And this tower was built as were the rest of them built on this side of the city to, to protect that beach because it was a place where people could easily land in shipping. We're going to walk up onto the top of King's Terrace and see what the tower looks like from the top. We're standing on top of the beach tower and the camera is looking right down into the, what, the historic, the old city of Waterford. A flat space on a small little hill between two rivers that was easily fortifiable. In the far distance is Reginald's Tower with the golden ball and the weather vane on top of it. Uh, established, they say, 1003. And then you see the spire of Christ Church Cathedral. You see the Tower of Greyfriars with the little blue and white flag on top of it. That's from 1240. And in the near, in the near distance, you see the Tower of Blackfriars from 1226. Looking upriver, in the distance you can see the Tower of the Dominican Church. And on a good day, if that tree be to our left wasn't in the way, we'd see Granny Castle. This tower was here because it dominated that whole stretch of river coming down from down the River Shore, coming down past Granna into the city of Waterford. Nothing that you can see in medieval times, that's up to about, and late medieval times, up to about 1700, there was nothing, no buildings, there were no buildings here at all. You would have been looking right out on a big long beach stretching up to Bilberry Rock. Bilberry Rock went straight down into the river. But it's called the Beach Tower because it dominated that beach that ran from the city all the way up to Bilberry. Uh, in, in medieval times, one of the main entrances into the city came in via the West Gate or St. Patrick's Gate, which stood near where the city wall crosses at the Garda station at the top of Patrick Street. And we're in the garden, I suppose, of Stephen Street School at the back of it, where the city wall runs along a very fine stretch of 13th century wall. There's, behind me is the semi-lunar tower. They call it semi-lunar because I suppose it's half round. And it's a really, a really fine example of one of the defensive uh, towers of Waterford City. This stretch of wall would have looked out on the Mayor's Walk and out onto Ballybricken, stretching from the beach tower through uh, the top of St. Patrick's Church, crossed through the West Gate into the semi-lunar tower and then down where, where we're heading next, down to the French Tower. This was a really nice, really nice stretch of wall. And the interesting thing, the tower behind it has a flat top. All the crenellations were knocked out off it at one stage, but it would have been much, much higher, probably another 10 or 15 feet high on top of that tower. So you get some idea about just how imposing all the 23 towers that ran around the city wall would have looked in medieval times. As I said, up to 1698, we have drawings of the city actually intact behind the walls and it was only from 1705 onwards that this whole expansion, the great 18th century expansion took place in Waterford which saw houses and housing and building and industry spread outside the medieval walls. But you can get some idea from this particular stretch of wall just how imposing 
the, the walls would have looked in medieval terms. And remember, there's no battlements on top of anything, there's no crenellations. You're looking at the remains of the walls because in the 18th century, when the walls went out of use, what people started to do, they used the walls as the nearest convenient quarry and started to take away huge stre stretches of them and knock off pieces to build their house or to build extensions. Standing here at the top of Castle Street and the camera is looking over Brown's Lane, back to De La Salle where we've just come from. And you can see a long stretch of the city wall again, again which would be facing out onto the end of Barrick Street, onto what used to be Butcher's Lane, at the end of Mayor's Walk and at the end of Short Course and Barrick Street of course being called On Course of Father, the Long Course. The tower in front of you is called the French Tower. Uh, if you look at it, it's a funny shape in that it looks circular but at the back there is a very large cut out from it and nobody knows why it's called the French Tower. And this tower is much higher because it would have had uh, crenellations and battlements and a watchtower on top of it so it was a very a very high tower gave a tremendous prospect all off to the west of the city, looking off out to Tremor, looking out the, the Cork Road and out to Tremor Road, so to the circular tower at the bottom, which is called the Watch Tower. And that's in, in the present day railway square. The city wall stretches back across and you can see the square tower in the middle distance there. That's called the Double Tower. And in the near distance then with the ivy growing on it, you have a a peculiar jut out of the city wall which is called the ramparts and this was built in the 17th century and um, they knocked down the medieval walls and made this platform the square platform for cannon to look out over the area right we're standing here in railway square now at, at the watchtower we're looking up castle street and i suppose this gives you the very the best idea in waterford of what a line, what the city would have looked from outside a, a, a line of wall with castles and towers all the way along it, defensive walls or defensive towers along it every stretch. So it really is a, a, a people have, forget that we have, I suppose, more city walls and water than most places in Ireland. Thank you.